Welcome back to Pan Am Football with Max Dean. Today we're going to be talking about Dak Prescott and the Dallas Cowboys via a question by Dak Prescott, not that Dak Prescott. So basically what we will talk about is whether they should resign him and what it will take to do so. And I'm going to go over the numbers so you guys have a good idea of what makes sense. Now, a couple of things real quick. Uh, as you can see, I'm doing some uh, some uh, added video now. Um, we will be doing a whole bunch of new stuff for the Pan Am Football Channel. There's a lot of stuff in the works. The podcast is going to be on video now as well. And uh, I've got some stuff in the pipeline that should hopefully be bringing videos every single day to the channel. It's been a crazy week. I live in Texas, as some of you may know, and uh, with two kids two years and under, it has been uh, a little difficult to get away and make videos, so sorry for a brief hiatus, but I am back. The feedback has been awesome, so thank you for that. Um, what else here to say? Oh, as always, the... Numbers that I'm getting come from SpotTrack.com and OverTheCap.com, so thank you to them per usual. Um, and if you have questions, video requests, throw them in the comments. Um, soon we'll be revealing the full slate of Pan Am football, so um, you'll kind of see what your requests will be looking like in the future too. Um, I guess let's jump into it. Uh, the first thing to go over here is kind of the construction of the, the Dallas Cowboys roster via their salary cap situation. So, as you, you might be able to tell, I'm a little cold. I'm out in my, my bar, and uh, there's no heat out here. And even though it's nice in the day, it's a little cold right now. So, you may notice that. Okay, so, as we go down the list... The core players are all at the top. You can tell their core players, A, because their salary cap hits are higher over the next few years, and they all have contracts that last longer than most of the other players. Any player with a cap hit um, in 2023 from CD Lamb down, they are all draft picks from just this past year. So everybody else... Is, uh, is a core player, except for Blake Jarwin, who's debatable. We're going to be talking about what those players mean for Dak Prescott and what Dak Prescott means for those players. So first things first, before we really start talking too many numbers, I want to talk about why did the Dallas Cowboys select these players to be their core. And this is important. So, looking at the big-time players here, we have Demarcus Lawrence, Amari Cooper, Zach Martin, Tyron Smith, Ezekiel Elliott, Lyle Collins, and Jalen Smith. And there are a, are a couple of things I want to point out here. The first thing that is a big deal to me is which of these players play premium positions. Okay, so Demarcus Lawrence, Amari Cooper, Tyron Smith and Lyle Collins. They all play premium positions. Those would be, you know, quarterback, pass rusher, offensive tackle, wide receiver. Now, Zach Martin, Ezekiel Elliott, and Jalen Smith, they do not. Um, Non-premium positions would be like guard, running back, tight end, linebacker, maybe safety. Occasionally, there are players who transcend that, but it, it's not the case most of the time. And the reason it's important is because when the Dallas Cowboys were constructing the top end of their roster over the past couple of years, they really should have been looking at the fact that Dak Prescott was going to need a big contract, and some of these players were going to have to be considered to be casualties of, of the situation. Now, did they know that the salary cap would go down? No, of course not, because the the COVID situation didn't really occur until very early in the 2020 offseason, and even then people weren't really sure what it was going to mean. Um, but it doesn't matter. It, it still 
is important that when you realize you're going to have to pay a franchise quarterback a, a very large contract, you're going to have to start saying goodbye to some of those positions that are non-premium. And I'm not saying don't invest in them, but you have to invest in them in the draft. You have to do it in a way where you're going to find value at the position. So paying Jalen Smith $12.75 million a year or Ezekiel Elliott $15 million per year, it's not really the right move. And you can tell that these are all core players. They're not just one or two year contracts. I mean, these guys that all signed in the 2019 to 2020 uh, time frame, or even 2018, I mean, you're looking at Demarcus Lawrence, five year contract. He was on his second franchise tag at that point. So it was just five years. Mari Cooper, five years. He was a free agent um, after they traded for him. He was a free agent. Uh, Lyle, uh, Lyle Collins, five years plus one previously existing year because it was an extension of five years on top of one remaining year. Ezekiel Elliott, six extension years on top of two previously existing contract years. So, I mean, they got Collins under contract for six and Ezekiel Elliott under contract for eight. Jalen Smith was five-year extension on top of two previously existing. So they have him for seven. These were all done in 2019 when it was Dak's last year under contract. And they knew that if they didn't work something out, they were going to have to put the franchise tag on him. At the time, they didn't maybe know that he was going to develop into an elite quarterback. But they should have known he was going to be expensive nonetheless. You don't really get quarterbacks for discounts. Either you're a franchise quarterback or you're not. It's 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 pretty cut and dry. Now, real world, is it is it black and white like that? No, there are different levels of play. But when it comes to contract negotiations, in terms of franchise quarterbacks, you either are or you're not. And then there are other categories. You're either a backup, you're a starter, like a you know a stopgap starter or your draft pick or whatever the case is but if you're a franchise quarterback you're a franchise quarterback and you get paid like one maybe you don't set the market but you're up there so they should have seen that coming they played hardball they didn't want to sign and so now they've got these guys under contract that's one of the big problems that we have here Zach Martin, I'm not, not going to say so much because he was the best at his position for quite a while. Plus, it was 2018, so it was a little bit before this, you, you know, you got to the Dak Prescott situation. And I'm okay with if you want to do one. If you want to pick one and he's the best in the league at what he does, fine. But you should not have gone through with the Ezekiel Elliott or Jalen Smith contracts. So, next up, we're going to look at the quarterback market because this is what you're looking at for the Dallas core of the roster. When you're looking at what that means for Dak Prescott, you really have a couple of options, and, and that's it. And so, this is what they are. Here, we're looking at the top compensated players at the quarterback position. I've included their age because it does make a difference. Up top, you've got Patrick Mahomes at 26, and he makes $45 million a year. Deshaun Watson at 26, makes $39 million per year. And then you've got Russell Wilson, Ben Roethlisberger, both in their 30s. Obviously, Russell Wilson is a little younger. Uh, Jared Goff, Aaron Rodgers, etc. Down here, you have Dak Prescott. Now, it's a little deceiving because with the franchise tag, you make an average of the top five at your position, but it's based on salary cap hit, not actual average per year. So in 2020, this was not what the top five cap hits looked at looked like by any means. So that put Dak Prescott's franchise tag number at 31.409 million. 
uh, for the 2020 season. And that puts him down just under Carson Wentz's average. If you were to do an extension with Dak Prescott, you're probably looking at Deshaun Watson type money. Um, it depends on what he settles for. He might do 38. He might do 39. The longer you wait, probably the higher it's going to be because there's a good chance that Josh Allen is going to sign a contract this offseason. Um, it's possible that, you know, Lamar Jackson or Baker Mayfield might do it. I'm not really sure exactly who will sign. I'm pretty sure Josh Allen will, but the longer you wait, the higher it's probably going to go per year. You're not going to hit Patrick Mahomes' money, but you might hit $40 million per year. If you don't do an extension, you're going to be looking at a franchise tag of $37,690,800. And that's important because even if you sign, if even if you put the franchise tag on him and uh, he signs it, you can still do an extension after the start of the new league year. But that's a really important number to start the new league year. So as we come back to the roster as it stands, I've included, like I, I did with the, the Saints, the 2022, 2023, 2024 salary cap figures for some of these players. But it's not that important. It's just to kind of give you an idea of what you're looking at for the future. I think for the Cowboys, 2022 is pretty important. Um, now, when I said you have a couple of options, you have two options. You either get an extension or a new contract done with Dak Prescott before the start of the new league year, or you franchise tag him. One of those two things has to happen. If you try and get an extension done before the first day of the new league year, it doesn't give you very much time as a team. Uh, it doesn't give you very much leverage as a team. So it may not significantly change the amount per year, but it would probably change some of the parameter, excuse me, parameters of the contract. You would probably be guaranteeing even more. You would probably put, be putting in more player-friendly uh, contract language. Um, you would probably be giving yourself a lot less flexibility in the long run, and it might raise the amount per year. However, if you were to do that, you would be able to fit that contract under the available cap space that the Cowboys currently have, which is $27.9 million, as you can see at the bottom there. So when you have this contract that's worth $39, $40 million a year, $38 million a year, whatever, you don't have to structure it where you have $40 million as a cap hit in the first year. You can ease up on the first year and do a little bit more down the line. Basically, if you were able to do that, then you wouldn't have to mess with all of the other players' contracts, really. And personally, if you can do that, I would. Because I wouldn't really want to mess with some of these other player contracts that much. Um, and I'd be willing to do some of them regardless of the Dak Prescott situation, but mostly I wouldn't want to. And the ones that you're going to have to mess with to do a franchise tag are the are possibly ones I wouldn't want to do it to. Um, so my number one option is get a deal done before the start of the new league year, if possible, because you kind of have to just take your lumps. You pushed this contract off. You just you you, you didn't make the offer he wanted. You didn't make the offer he wanted. He bet on himself. At this point, you should probably just get it done. Because that gives you more flexibility as a team with the rest of your roster. Less with one player, but more with everybody else, for the most part. If you 
don't, and you put the franchise tag on him, it just it makes you have to do a lot more other things. So if you don't, I'm going to show you what I would probably do to get myself salary cap compliant and to fit his franchise tag on here. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at who I can extend, excuse me, who I can restructure, and I'll tell you who I would not want to restructure. Ezekiel Elliott, I do not want to restructure at all. He's uncuttable this year. He has a, a lot in dead money. The dead money that you see there for 2021 would be all of his prorated bonus, but also his salary, which is guaranteed, and then his salary for 2022 would be guaranteed as well, I think on like the fifth day of the league year this year or something like that. And so you're, you're stuck with him for probably another two years. <laughs> I want out as soon as that point comes. I do not want to push any money down the line to make it harder for myself to cut him when that day becomes available. You're probably looking at being able to do that in 2023, I think. Um, I just want to double check here because I just want to check the vesting guarantees. Like I said, so in, in, if 2022, it looks like he only has dead money of 10.8 million, but at a certain point, if he's on the roster this year, that 2022 salary becomes guaranteed, at least in part. I just want to double check when that is. Um, and how much of it that is. But basically, you can't cut him until 2023 uh, without significant repercussions. Um, 2022 salary fully guarantees on the fifth day of the 2021 league year. Yeah, okay, so all 12.4 million will be fully guaranteed this year. You can't cut him this year because you can't afford to. So basically, you have him for 21, 2021, 2022, and after that, then you can make things happen with him. I would not want to touch anything that would make that harder down the line. This was a bad contract. Uh, this this was a bad contract. Now, there are there are good contracts that you shouldn't have signed because you should not have added that player. Then there are bad contracts. This is a bad contract. It, it, it was not a wise decision. I don't think anybody else would have given Ezekiel Elliott this contract if you let him get to free agency. You might have even gotten him back at a lower amount. I don't know that or anything, but you know what I mean? It is just a bad, bad contract, bad extension. Next up, Jalen, Jalen Smith. I don't want to do anything with uh, you can't cut him this year again it just it doesn't save you any money so it doesn't make sense to do it you'd be losing a solid player at uh, you know uh, not that important position but you wouldn't be gaining anything you wouldn't be gaining any salary cap space or anything uh, potentially you could try and trade him I'm not sure who would would go for it again you wouldn't gain any cap space but what you would uh gain is probably uh, you know obviously a draft pick of some kind which would be helpful to you um and the other thing is you might want to trade him if you can because his salary in 2022 is not guaranteed but it is guaranteed for injury so if he gets hurt in 2021 like badly you're stuck with him in 2022 and so um, cutting him outright doesn't make sense but if anybody's willing to bite on a, a a decent linebacker for under 10 million for the year i would probably pull the trigger on that if you're dallas again you're not saving any cap space you are getting a draft pick and you are saving yourself from his future salary which could be which would be guaranteed in the case of an injury. Demarcus Lawrence, on the other hand, he's probably who I would want to go with. He is the biggest cap hit this year. He stands to save the most out of any of the players. He also plays a premium position. 
did he have a, the greatest year? Uh, compared to his standards, not really, but he's a pass rusher. And he is pretty valuable. Um, do I really want to do this? No. Again, my preference would be to sign Prescott to an extension to make this unnecessary. But if we have to create enough space for that franchise tag, he's who I would start with because he frees up the most space and he plays a premier position. I don't really foresee them cutting him next year anyway. So what you would do is you would take the base salary and you would uh, convert everything possible into a signing bonus. Uh, all that would remain is the veteran minimum for a player of his uh, experience. So that would be $1.075 million. I believe he's played seven years in the leagues, so that is what his base salary would be. Um, and so you would take the remaining amount of that base salary would be converted into the uh, signing bonus, and that would be prorated through the four remaining years. Now, again, on the bottom there in 2024, that's a void year anyway. So uh, he's not really, he's under contract, but the contract is built to void then. Um, however, that prorated bonus would extend onto that fourth year as well. So uh, your new cap hit would be 13 million and some change. And uh, that saves, let me see, I wrote it down here. That would save basically 12 million um, to just under. So basically you're saving 12 million on the salary cap if you were to restructure him in this way. You definitely make it impossible to release him um, before 2023. But, you know, I just find it unlikely that they would have done that anyway, to be honest. So if you include that uh, and have that take effect, you see his new cap, it is uh, up on top at 13 million. Um, and the new space created is over the 37 million that you need for DAX franchise tag. So now we, we've made enough space for that at least. We need to do a little bit more for uh, just, you know, surplus base as well as rookie draft picks, etc. cetera. Um, it, you don't necessarily need to make space for rookie draft picks right now because it you could do it later, but you still need more space than that to go into the new league year. So we're going to look at, uh, next up, cutting a couple of players who are kind of superfluous. Um, you know, I don't want to jump right back into restructuring, guys. I want to see what I can do before I make those kinds of commitments again. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cut Greg Zurland, the kicker. Um, his current cap hit is uh, 2.83333 million, um, and he doesn't have a lot of dead money. So we're going to release him. If we need a kicker, draft one or sign one for a million bucks or whatever at some point down the line, but we're going to do this because he's just not an essential part of the team. He's a luxury. So he has just over 600000 in dead money, um, but now you're over $42 million because he saved, let's see, he saved just over $2 million. Uh, next up, we're going to do the same thing with Chris Jones, the punter. Um, again, another luxury position. Is it nice to have good players at these special teams positions? Yes, but we're talking about franchise quarterback. We're going to make this move. Chris Jones has, I believe, 500000 in dead money, so we're going to release him. We now have $44 million in available space. And next up, um, the thing is, as we go forward, I don't really want to cut anybody else because... As, as you see, they're a very top-heavy team in terms of salary, so anybody you're cutting is not really bringing much back to you in terms of space. Um, you know, Leighton Van Der Esch, he's, uh, his contract is basically guaranteed because he was a first-round pick. C.D. Lamb, the same. Obviously, you're not cutting him anyway. Blake Jarwin is, is a pretty decent tight end, and he doesn't free up that much space either, so at that point... The only other guys 
you're looking at is Anthony Brown and secondary has been a pretty big issue for them. Uh, even if they draft a corner, I don't really want to release anybody on defense if I can help it. So we're going to go back to restructuring and I'm going to look at Lyle Collins because he is, again, another player who I would expect to be on the team for quite a while. His current contract has a cap hit of $12 million this year, just over. And um, he has a base salary of $808,550,000. So again, we're going to do the same thing. We are going to remove all of that base salary uh, that's possible, leaving only the veteran minimum, and convert it into a signing bonus and free up some space that way. Collins is a good right tackle. And uh, one of the coolest things that the Cowboys have done, because they're, they're not without merit, they've just made a bunch of dumb decisions, but one of the coolest things that they've done is they managed to get Tyron Smith down under contract with an eight-year extension on top of two years still remaining. So they had him under contract for 10 years from when they signed him, which, back, which was back in 2014. And because they, uh, he was the best in the league by, I think, most standards at the time, he had a fairly high contract, but when you extend that over 10 years, the market is going to exceed that substantially, which it's done. So I know he's had some injuries, but right now he is a left tackle uh, who, when healthy, is very good for $12.75 million per year, I think. Uh, or just over $12 million per year. And now you have Lyle Collins at $10 million per year. So you have two good tackles on veteran contracts for as much as Laramie Tunsil makes per year. And so, again, that is a great move. That is something I'm happy about. It's also why I'm comfortable doing this with Lyle Collins is because he's been good. He got hurt last year, but he hasn't really been consistently hurt, so I'm not too worried about it. Um, his base salary would be nine hundred ninety million uh, thousand. I think I believe that he's had six accrued seasons, so that's what his would qualify for. That would increase his prorated bonus over the next four years, um, and his cap hit would be six million three hundred eighty thousand, which would save five point six four million against the cap this year. That brings your space up to forty nine million. 656,000, etc. Uh, next year, your cap space is looking at about 60 million. That would be probably pretty strongly hit by the Dak Prescott contract. Um, whatever would go happen with that going forward. So that that basically is all the moves that I think is really necessary. That leaves you with about 10 million extra over the franchise tag Prescott. There's one more move that I would do just to just do it, and that is I would trade Michael Gallup. He's not part of the future of your team. You have Amari Cooper making a lot of money. You just spent a first-round pick on um, on Michael Gallup, so I would trade him. You could even use the pick that you get back on a wide receiver if you want to, who will be around longer and who can be a, a cheap part of your core for the future, um, but... I just, I don't think that, yeah, he's great to have his depth, but I think that he is probably more valuable as a draft pick return, right? because the draft is the only way that you're really going to be able to add players to your roster this year. Even though you have $10 million in cap, that's not really enough to add anybody from the outside. So who you have is who you're going with, like basically except for in the draft and unrestricted, uh, uh, undrafted free agency which comes after the draft so you don't really have options in terms of finding new veterans so the more draft picks you can accrue the better off you are so I would trade him he doesn't free up a lot of space he only frees up 920,000 which is basically a million but um, it's not really about freeing up space it's more about being able to add to your your long-term roster for um, you know, and this is your last chance to trade him unless you want to wait till the trade deadline next year. It doesn't really make that much sense to me. You could if you wanted to, but I would just do it now. You'll probably get a solid pick for him. 
um, because a lot of the other guys, you know, like the other guys who would be available in free agency, you know, you probably have to give up more for them. Um, and they'll demand very high contracts. Gallup is a guy that you can trade for and then franchise tag if you wanted to go that route, or you could extend him probably for a little bit less than like a an Allen Robinson or a Kenny Galladay. So I think he would be desirable. Um, so let's do that. So at this point, we have 50 million in cap space. We need just over 37 million for Prescott. That gives us a little over 10 million for uh, you know various moves that we want to make. That gets us past the start of the new league year. Once that has happened, you can make some moves. You know, um, you might do a post June one cut for somebody. I, I don't even think there's anybody who that even makes sense for. Yes, Blake Jarwin potentially, uh, uh, but you know, you might trade somebody else. Um, but that's basically what I would do. And now to answer the question of should they keep Dak Prescott? Yes, absolutely. Yes. What would you be looking at without him? I mean, you're at 10th overall, I think in the draft. So you had a roster that sucked so badly when Dak Prescott wasn't there. Your defense was atrocious, and even your offense wasn't very good with one of the better backup quarterbacks in the league running it. Uh, I mean, it, Andy Dalton was fine, but you know you weren't playoff contending. So, if you're sitting at 10 overall, and you decide that you want to move on from Dak Prescott, that leaves you only one option, and that is the franchise tag. Because you are not just going to let him walk in free agency. It would be the stupidest thing of all time. It's never going to happen. So if you move on from him, you have to tag him, and then you have to trade him. And I feel like silly even going down this rabbit hole, because it makes no sense. It's not going to happen. But if you were to do that, you would still have to do all of the moves that I just laid out right here. So you still don't have any additional salary cap flexibility you know you would get multiple first round picks for Dak Prescott but from who you know probably somebody in, that's choosing later in the draft probably a better team I, you know I don't think it would be anybody picking in like the top five I don't think it's going to be anybody who would be drafting a quarterback anyway um I, the Dolphins, hypothetically, maybe, but that would really be the only team, even hypothetically, that would give you a pick high enough to draft a quarterback. So you would then have to turn around and trade a bunch of picks, whatever you got back for Dak, probably, to trade up in this draft to draft a completely unknown player. So you literally have the same exact team that you have right now, which was bad without Dak Prescott. You, all Any cap space that you would get back after the Dak trade would be too late to sign anybody in free agency. So you're this team, you're still making the moves I didn't want to make but had to. You don't add anybody in free agency. You can't even add anybody in the draft because you had to draft a quarterback and you had to trade up to do it. What, what part of that makes any sense to, to, to move on from Dak Prescott? Like he's expensive, but that's what quarterbacks are. They're the most important player in the NFL. Like on any roster, they are, if you don't have a good one, you're not gonna be consistent winners. Even adequate ones only help you win some of the time, not not a lot of the time. You know what I mean? Like you you will have way more season by season variance. You won't be that consistent playoff contender. You'll always have to have a really good roster around them. So a really good quarterback like Dak Prescott is expensive because there are very few of them. 
I'll talk about quarterbacks more in another video at large, but I really wanted to focus on the Cowboys in this one. So if you were to even consider moving on from Dak Prescott, your roster does not get any better. It doesn't get any better because of the move. It actually gets worse because you have a younger quarterback who, even if he's all-time great, is probably not going to be that in year one, maybe not even year two. So assuming that happens, you, you have an equal roster, a young quarterback who's totally unproven, nobody added in the draft. You know? then it just doesn't make any sense. So keeping Dak Prescott, you have two options. Get an extension done or do the franchise tag. I would prefer to get the extension done. If you have to go the franchise tag route, I've laid out for you what I would do to make your salary cap situation viable for that. So, guys, thanks for watching. Again, I appreciate it. I probably went a little bit long with this one, um, but it's now 4 in the morning, so I think I'm just tired. Uh, make requests and leave feedback. I've really been appreciating, pre appreciating it. The, the channel's been growing pretty consistently, and I'm really excited about it, and I have a lot of stuff in the pipeline for you all. So uh, stay tuned in and I will be getting to others. I have requests for the 49ers. I'll look at them. Um, I have a request for the Steelers. I'll look at them. I did the Ben Roethlisberger video, but I'll look at the full team. And I think I have a couple of others. I wrote them down. All right, guys. So have an awesome night and day and whenever it is that you watch this and I'm going to go sleep for a while.